Hi! Welcome to episode one of North American Anime and how it started with fan. My name is William Chow and I'm the founder of Arctic Animation and I'm going to bring you through a, a trip down memory lane as well as uh, give you some, some suggestions on some anime you might want to check out and as well as tell my story on how fan and, uh, and fan interaction uh, brought more anime presence to the anime fans in North America. And in this episode, I'm going to go over um, how uh, anime fans uh, came and created what they call fan clubs uh, so that they could share the information and share each, uh, 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 knowledge about anime uh, within their small community. So. Uh, if you uh, continue on with episode zero, basically I want to continue to uh, tell my history and build a base uh, from what future episodes can be then based on, because uh, I'll have to get into episodes uh, regarding uh, the, the changes in technology, uh, which uh, you will want to catch on that one because that will be an interesting change on in how uh, technology uh, from the past to the, f uh, to the present has changed how we get anime and how anime is uh, now enjoyed by uh, the fans uh, uh, today. So, in order to get that episode, you'd want to basically subscribe below here. Uh, you want to click on the subscribe button so you can get those next uh, future episodes, and as well as you want to click like so that you can keep uh, all the notifications on there. So, I want to continue on with uh, my story today on how um, uh, I became uh, more interested in anime when I got to Vancouver and how I managed to find fan clubs. And of course, you guys are probably asking me there. Well, why should we care what happens in Vancouver? Um, and uh, you know, and uh, you know, you you are out there in, at, at your campus or uh, at your school, have, you know, trying to do a club or even in a small town. And the reason is is because I think a lot of us will begin, um, uh, like myself, not really, in, you know, in, in um, uh, immersed in any sort of anime whatsoever. I mean, I get, I grew up in basically. Uh, a very remote, uh, a, a small town, uh, less than 100,000 people. Um, you know, on Saturday morning, uh, where we got a lot of our cartoons. You know, I'm like mo the most of you. I'm watching, uh, you know, Superman. Uh, you know, Superman and Batman. Despite my my favorite was uh, was uh, Spider-Man is Amazing Friends, and you know, even Iceman and, and Firestar were my two favorites. Uh, you know, a lot of the filmation stories. So. Uh, you know, the Lone Ranger, Black Star, uh, Tarzan, very good ones. I also like the, the, you know, the newer, um, at that time, um, Space Age shows, uh, which is Space Academy, uh, Jason and Star Command. Those are all the, th the types of shows that I grew up with. So definitely no, in and no, and no anime uh, 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 influences there. And so basically when I went, came to a, you know, a much larger city like Vancouver, when I started my uh, university studies, uh, I started getting interested in anime, but I didn't know where to get it. And so, just like most people, they would go around to different places that uh, they would normally go to, um, and then they'd learn more about yeah, uh, learn more about where you would get anime. And one of the places that was very common uh, to get information from that is from your local gaming store or from your local uh, comic book store. Now, in my case, the most closest comic store to me was this place called Comic Emporium. Uh, it was run by a, a person named Ro uh, Rob Walker, um, and uh, but he wasn't the main influence. He, he, he helped, um, though. But one of the employees that worked there was a Carter Lamb, and I got to talking to him because I you know I live close to that comic book store, and he was interested in anime. And basically, he gave me some tips on on the on these different things like Macross and and how you know. And, and at the time, uh, Robotech was coming out by uh, Kamiko. Uh, and so that was sort of uh, you know uh, sort of my first introduction that, that, that this kind of other stuff that we were watching on uh, TV you know called Robotech and you know the Captain Harlocks and the uh, you know, Queen of Thousand Years uh, you know in, in French you that would be Albator for you um, so soon enough the car I found that this comic store started handing out these little leaflets these little advertisements um, having this. Japanese Animation Club, and they were going to hold their uh, meeting at the Trout Lake Community Center. So this is where you know I thought, oh, this is great. Uh, you know, there's me a place that we can go to that 
you know, I can meet other people that have, you know, uh, the same sort of interest of Japanese animation. I might be able to find some uh, other people who have other types of anime other than, you know, you know your Robotech and your, you know, uh, you know Space Cruiser Yamato or uh, Captain Harlock and the Queen of a Thousand Years, you know, that kind of thing. You know, maybe there's some other stuff that, that's available. And so I went to this meeting and uh, it was, a, you know, it's a, it's a community center. And uh, you know it's a room that basically had this uh, rickety old uh, you know TV that's sort of mount, uh, it's sort of a 30 inch uh, tube TV mounted in an, in an entertainment system which uh, they wheeled around the community center. And it's rather kind of uh, interesting because the community center itself at that time is a two story uh, uh, complex, and the room that we uh, that, that that we ended up in uh, was upstairs in this complex, and there's no elevator in this complex, so. I uh, learned that uh, what they had to do is they had to wheel the the, the TV VCR combination entertainment system uh, from the vault downstairs all the way outside, uh, out the parking lot, in up through the sidewalk, up this uh, you know basically a wheelchair ramp up the sidewalk, and then basically down the sidewalk through the side door on the second level of this complex, and uh, that's how you had to basically move things or you know gain wheelchair access. From the first level to the second level, you actually had to go out through the parking lot, uh, into the uh, into the sidewalk, and then out th through the side door, which is really, really kind of you know, you know kind of precarious. Anyway, this room that we went into, uh, you know, uh, it had of course Carter, uh, uh, my, my contact from the comic store, and this uh, gentleman named Nicholas Condor from the uh, Victoria Japanese Animation Club. Um, who was actually part of the uh, what they referred to at the time the CFO, which is the Cartoon Fantasy Organization, uh, Victoria chapter, and uh, they came, they came together and they decided that they that uh, you know even though Victoria had their chapter, that Vancouver should have their own animation chapter, and that's what they decided to start this this uh, uh, animation club, and you know this this room was very well attended. There's about uh, at that time about thirty people, uh, almost entirely all guys. And um, you know, and I can probably do, you know say the reason behind that is because you know a lot of the, at the time a lot of the animes were uh, I like to always call them, has the three G's uh, girls, guns, and gore. So I mean that was the formula for basically a lot of the animes out there, and that's probably why anime got such a, a really you know uh, you know bad name, sort of that bad uh, sort of uh, you know um, uh, 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 you know aura. Or that sort of uh, you know that kind of uh, you know shunned genre because it was all that kind of uh, a bad stuff, and um, and if you're into that, that's great. But I mean you know that's what uh, we had at that time, and um, you know again I'll get into more of an episode of what all that means. Um, so again, you wanted to click subscribe down below, and I'll get that uh, in another episode. Um, so uh, from that uh, this meeting. Uh, I, I, I was great that I got to, uh, to meet Nicholas Condor, and uh, and from that uh, I learned a lot of information about this entire network that sort of came out uh, from uh, this CFO thing, um, because again, anime itself wasn't big enough to create its own fan club. It basically um, had to base uh, had to piggyback off of uh, the the sci-fi uh, group. So all the, you know, because a lot of the animes at that time were very spacey, um, you know, because you think Robotech, uh, you know, uh, Star Blazers, you know, uh, Captain Harlock, all very space oriented, you know, sci-fi related. You know, we didn't have magical girl shows, we didn't have, you know, any uh, high school romance stories. You know, the concept of having, you know, r you know, r uh, racing car, you know, animes or basketball animes, or you know that kind of stuff was uh, uh, you know a foreign concept, okay? Because uh, the main thing that uh, people thought of making money on anime was the three G's, and if it didn't have that, uh, then we, you know, then it just wasn't available. Which is leads me to another conversation that we're going to talk about is how, because of the certain um, uh, you know availability made by uh, the you know by the companies or by fans. Um, will limit you in what anime you get to watch. So just because you think you're in this new modern era of, uh, 
of internet and everything, and you should have you know full access to all the anime that's out there. Uh, why do you think that you know we might not actually have all that anime available? You know, like, shouldn't you think you know we we should we should be able to see all the magical girl shows that are out there? You'd be surprised what you'd be missing. You know, there's uh, an anime about cooking. Well, yes. Indeed, maybe you totally missed that because you know, maybe nobody's actually doing any uh, uh, any translation to that. And uh, there's quite a few enemies in, in, in the past that we probably would have missed, uh, including maybe something like Orange Road, totally would have missed it and would have went to the wayside if, uh, you know, um, Arctic Animation didn't actually begin a big fan movement uh, into... Uh, you know, translating that and making that available because it could quite simply would have been overshadowed by another anime of similar ilk called Maison Ikaku, which is also being aired roughly about the same time and it just would have been, you know, lost in the shuffle. But again, that will be gone over in a, in a future episode uh, why Arctic Animation decided to do Orange Road, uh, Maison Ikaku, as well as all, all, our, all of our different titles. Pat Labor, uh, Miracle Girls, Sailor Moon, uh, and even then we went into the whole entire Magical Girl era, where we went into mag uh, into Miracle Girls, uh, Red Riding Hood, Cha Cha, uh, even all the, uh, the, the and some of the uh, later later acquisitions that we were working on, uh, Dan Cougar, uh, Shurato, uh, and even Heavy Metal Elgheim, and uh, of course uh, Metal Armor Dragon. Uh, to name a few of the ones that we're working on in, in the late stretches. So again, you want to subscribe definitely uh, to catch up to those stories of what we did uh, with those. Um, so that's basically uh, how you know, people nowadays would obviously communicate is obviously using the internet. But again, um, the similar type of thing would happen where people would join together in similar groups or in um, you know interest groups, as you would, would, would want to say, that have uh, people that are interested in the same sort of animes and things that you are interested in, and they gather together so that they can collectively talk about things that they would normally watch, you make sure that, you know, that they, they catch certain uh, story arcs. Uh, if you do cosplay together, then that, you know, that, you know that, that sort of thing would happen. So again, you know, in the early days of, 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 of uh, anime, uh, when the clubs are beginning, the big emphasis was on the acquisition of the anime because at the time, anime was not easy to get. Uh, the internet was not as fast as they could do it, uh, as, it as it was today, and therefore, actually getting the actual video content from Japan to North America was an issue, and and uh, so a lot of effort and time and money was spent trying to get that uh, get that sort of material here um, and so that's why again the, uh, the, the the help of the fan club to get people together uh, so we can share the one anime that, 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 that did uh, come to us as well as find out more information and can uh, improve our networking so that we can uh, uh, use our contacts to, you know, to acquire more anime as well as uh, to learn more information about the different types of anime and one of the things that the, uh, the, the, the that the that they used to communicate things uh, with uh, is uh, they had produced these things called the uh, uh, flyers or new uh, or like fanzines. Okay, uh, small little thing. Um, it was basically created um, uh, by the fans, and they basically put a lot of information and uh, fan artwork into it. Uh, and they basically took information, uh, you, you know, from the very different sources, uh, usually from the computer world. Even though the internet was as slow as it is, uh, a lot of the networks were all basically based off of the bulletin board system and dial-up. So they had information about the different types of anime in here. Uh, in this case, this was a, a little, a little a read up on a, a show called Castle in the Sky, and um, you know, as shown on the front cover here, there's a picture of Vampire Princess Mew. Um, and uh, basically, this thing allowed the uh, membership of the uh, of the uh, animation club to basically communicate uh, different ideas, different shows that maybe you should maybe uh, to have a look at that's available and that's new. Uh, maybe give you something that uh, you haven't seen before, 
and uh, it also would give you a little bit of translation because there are a lot of these shows that we have um, were coming in straight in Japanese with no uh, English translation at all, no subtitles, uh, uh, no English dialogue. So a lot of times uh, they would have uh, synopsis, which is a really popular thing. It's basically a very sort of a, a cold uh, books notes uh, version of the show. So, uh, for example, in here they have a, a small little uh, diblet, uh, you know, a one-page sort of a, uh, illustration here on superdimensional uh, century orgas, which is a uh, drawn by uh, 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 Mickey Moto, the same artist that, that, that did uh, Macross. So, superdimensional fortress orgas was basically uh, one of these shows that you would have to read uh, the synopsises to find out exactly uh, what was going on in the show. Uh, because without that, then you wouldn't be able to know um, what was going on except you know, basically uh, using your imagination to figure out uh, what exactly uh, the dialogue and the course of the uh, story is going on. Uh, which made uh, some pretty interesting uh, interpretations. So using this information I found in this book, uh, this uh, pamphlet that, they, that, they, that the Animation Club came out, and talking to Nicholas Condor about uh, the connections that the CFO has uh, done, uh, I was able to contact uh, all the various different chapters uh, and different chapters of the CFO and uh, get in contact with some key people uh, around the U.S. Uh, and all across the country uh, to get and learn more about anime. You know, very, some very uh, uh, you know, specific fans, like uh, there was a, you know, uh, uh, some people uh, that are more, uh, very interested in one particular type of show. Uh, uh, I remember uh, Tim Eldred, who was very, very fascinated with that uh, uh, Votums show. And, uh, and there's also, uh, uh, later on I'll get into, but I also uh, got in contact with a Robert Gutierrez, which was part of the Ranma project. Um, he, uh, again, um, I was able to meet him when I went down to the, one of the San Diego comic conventions and, uh, and learn more about his project and what he has done. Again, you want to subscribe to that one because that's a great uh, storytelling episode uh, and you will learn and, and hear a lot of great stories about that kind of stuff uh, that you're not going to find out just by Googling, uh, you know, random project or Arctic animation uh, in that respect. Or, or that's not probably one of those stories that you're going to find out from the uh, San Diego Comic Con from uh, the early years either by Google. So you want to subscribe to that, you want to hear that. Now someone asked me, uh, why would we want to listen to your video cast uh, when we can find a lot of information um, on Google, for example? And it's true that there are some information out there uh, about how fan animation and fan subs and that stuff affected how we watch anime and how that uh, rise uh, of that popularity in North America, um, you know, a couple of wiki wiki sites, um, and you know things like the you know the, the Tokyo Pop sort of uh, summary of how anime history sort of arose in North America are all very very um, you know brief, but it's also very one-sided, obviously, because uh, the angle that they're going into is uh, obviously you know more towards the commercial. Um, uh, bringing up how anime got popular and that kind of stuff, but more importantly, it's uh, it's better to hear uh, the stories and, and and the facts come from the horse's mouth. Okay, it's you know one thing to have a, a reporter or a blog person come and say that oh, Arctic Animation did this. Okay, without actually asking me or interviewing me or anything like that or providing any quotes um, because then they can post anything like that on Wikipedia without actually saying it. Whereas, you know, it'd be, uh, my analogy would be, um, you know, if you were going to do uh, or find out information about, uh, let's say, World War II, you know, wouldn't you want to, you know, talk to um, a veteran who was actually there in the front lines, uh, you know, uh, you know, maybe on the, you know, on the beaches of uh, Normandy, or you know, at Pearl Harbor or something? Wouldn't you want to talk to someone like that as a as opposed to watching a documentary on TV or, or uh, you know, 
uh, reading a book uh, that, uh, from one person's point of view uh, that uh, you know that, that, that uh, got uh, information from different people and, and kind of combined it together to make uh, you know to make a story uh, you know like Pearl Harbor or uh, you know or like uh, Herman Woke's uh, uh, you know the, the, the book uh, that he that he put together so you know this is uh, this is my, an opportunity to, to basically give you stories that you aren't going to be able to to, to, to hear or, or or know about unless you ask you know ask the person directly. And so, uh, one of the things I've got uh, in the links below is a contact page. So you want to leave me a suggestion, ask me a question, leave me a comment. By all means, go to the book below and uh, you can go to my website. There's a, a contact link there, and uh, so you uh, you can do that. <clears throat> the second thing that, uh, that I have uh, as, a, as an ongoing um, uh, promotional interaction that you can do, um, I said that I like the uh, ball caps, and today, uh, for episode one, I'm wearing uh, the uh, Seattle Seahawks, okay, and um, a very popular player, you know, uh, uh, Marshawn Lynch, he's a big fan of uh, Harry Potter apparently. So uh, my recommendation to uh, Marshawn Lynch, if you're going to watch an anime and you, since you might uh, like the Harry Potter, I am going to give you the suggestion to watch Slayers, uh, another uh, f famous uh, VA show uh, starring the, our favorite uh, uh, Megami Hashibara as, uh, as the main uh, character Lena Inverse, who has this, uh, now shall we say, a uh, uh, you know, on the surface, a very brash uh, young girl. But uh, on the uh, but uh, you know behind all that, she's an incredibly powerful magic user, which uh, maybe in some cases uh, overdoes it a little bit, maybe. So that's my suggestion. That's it. So again, if you have a uh, a ball cap or uh, you know you like to promote uh, your uh, sports team, uh, by all means, uh, my contact information is below, and uh, uh, if you'd like me to. To wear that one there and promote your team, then by all means, uh, and maybe give uh, some player a suggestion of what kind of anime that they should watch. Uh, by all means, uh, you can send that in. <clears throat> all right. So next episode, I want to get into and lay a base for the uh, upcoming episodes uh, past that. And so one of the things that I'm going to have to lay a great base for is give you an idea of what technological challenges that we had and the only way I can do that is I have to paint a picture of what the anime environment was like and what the technological base that we had to work with was like back when anime was started uh, back in the early 80s okay and so that's gonna be a kind of a large topic it's gonna be a little bit of imagination sort of thing so I'm going to have to get into that in our next episode. And uh, so you want to tune into that. Again, you want to click to the subscribe uh, down below here. Click your like. And uh, as they say in that anime called Heavy Metal Elgheim at the very end, the announcer would go, see you again.